What's going on, guys? Thank you, everyone, for joining. We're happy to have you. Uh, I am here to introduce the author and my sweetheart, Feeding the Frasers, Sammy Monas. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What a lovely thing. Welcome, everyone, to our home. Thank you so much for being here. I'm super pumped to talk about this. Look at these two cuties. Hopefully, everyone has gotten their pre-order <laughs> copy. <laughs> there is a link below here. Oh pointing right there. Um, if you guys haven't yet purchased it, uh, you can grab a copy, one of the ones that we're going to sign tonight, which is super exciting. So thank you guys so much for being here. Um, so as, just... as Sammy is signing books, I have a list of questions. So she'll get the signing. I'll run through some questions and hopefully we get some good answers. Yeah. I'm just going to talk about the book real quick oh, before perfect. we get to the questions. Yeah, yeah. do it. Um, gosh, where do I even start? This was like, this was quite the project. So much fun. Uh, writing this book and filled with so many memories. Like I was flipping through the, I've, full disclosure, I have flipped through the book every day. I call it my daily flip through. It's one of those things I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's real, it's here. And that's pretty much what I do is I just skim it like this. And I'm like, okay, let's start the day. Um, but it's filled with so many memories too. You know, I read through all of the little descriptions that I wrote and I just, I remember where I was when I wrote the recipe or when I tested the recipe or who we had over that night because I'd cooked five recipes in a day and it was like, okay, um, hey, can somebody come over and help us eat it? And well, I remember there are certain recipes where we were making, you were making them so much yeah. so often that all of our neighbors ate incredibly yeah. well through this cookbook. Cause it was only the two of us. Yeah. It is only the two of us living together. So, you know, you can only eat so many cheesecakes. Right. And so cheesecake like the sure. neighbors just got cheesecakes after cheesecakes, you know, stuff like that, you know? Yeah. That was a ton of, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> we purchased those like little clamshell things. So that way I could send yeah, everyone take, home. Take out boxes. Take out boxes. And, oh man. But I mean, so I remember fun. the process just from you signing your book deal, mm -hmm. the initial honeymoon phase. Yeah. And then once you actually started breaking it down into like the steps, it was this, you were completely overwhelmed yeah. because it went from taking photos for Instagram mm -hmm. to actually taking photos that were going to get published and blown up. So they need to be high res, they need different angles, all these things. Yeah. So I just remember the process of you going through different photography classes yeah. and just reaching out to any resource that you had. And it was just incredible watching the progressions go through like looking at your photos from the first recipe you did yeah. to the finished product in the book as oh my gosh the learning yeah. and just the learning and progress that went on through the last what 18 months i know yeah two the, years yeah i mean it was and that's the thing it's like it's funny <clears throat> about a cookbook you know there's a laundry list of ingredients and there's 15 plus steps for every recipe and the whole point of the photo in there is to get you as the reader to be like, wow, that looks amazing. I don't care that there's, you know, I've got to go to the grocery store and get these 12 things. And then I got to go through the 15 steps to do it. That looks so good. I'm willing to put in all the work, right? Like I'm not coming to your house and saying, what would you like for dinner tonight? Oh, you want this? Okay. I'll make it. Um, you have to do it. And so I think that that's one of the most powerful things about cookbook imagery is that it's got to make you salivate and it's got to make you, you know, willing to put the work in because really it's up to you. Mm -hmm. um, once it's in your home, you got to make it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm very, very grateful for, for that. Even s simple things. I was telling someone the other day that I learned how to properly write a recipe, you know, like that there's an order in which the ingredients, I mean, I say have to be right. Like there are plenty of people out there that write their recipes the way that they write them. Um, but I learned that there's, you know, the order of the ingredients on the list on the side is actually the order in which they show up in the recipe. So, you know, instead of taking like beef and broccoli recipe, like the, in my, when I first started doing yeah. it, I was like, okay, so we got beef and we got broccoli and then we got all these other things, <laughs> but you might not touch the beef until, yeah. you know, step 13. So I thought that that just little things like that just makes you feel feel good that you came away from something like this with really big learnings and then, you know, even really small learnings that hopefully, um, you know, are making the, the recipes more approachable <clears throat> for people and, you know, just get people excited to get in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a little story behind the book. 
Yeah. All right. You want to jump into Let's some some questions? Let's do it. Uh, I think these are submitted from. Yeah. So viewers. the people that registered for yep. the, for the live event. So thank okay. You. So you want to grab your favorite oh, pen? Oh yeah, I guess I forgot yeah. that I'm signing books as well. I'm just ready for a conversation. <laughs> All right. So first question. This is uh, oh. could be an easy one. Could be could take a little while. How did you and Matt meet? Oh my gosh. Well, I was working at Reebok and you were competing mm -hmm. uh, in CrossFit. For anybody, Matt is the five-time CrossFit Games champion, and all of this is because he. I have an appetite. He has an appetite. He <laughs> ate a lot. He needed a lot of calorie, calories. So I was lucky enough to get to experiment uh, with cooking. But um, we met while I was working at Reebok and um, met through some mutual friends. And I mean, when did what was it? When did we first meet? So it was back in 2015. Here we'll put those over there. Yeah, yeah. I think it was. It was 2015, and it was the open announcement that was at Reebok. That was like really the first time that we met. Yeah. met. Uh, we had some mutual friends, and then we just started chatting from there. And but then the 2015 CrossFit, CrossFit Games, Games. yeah. Um, instead of focusing on competing, I was focusing on sending cute text messages to the cute girl. He was that was nearby, with me. and that was her. Yeah. So we've been that's inseparable a, ever yep. since. Who made the first move? Oh, that was definitely me. Yeah. Yeah. 100% hurt. Yeah. Um, Matt got my phone number from a friend and I heard from that friend like, oh, guess who I gave your number to? And I was like, who? And like, oh, it was Matt. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so exciting. And then a couple weeks went by and I was like, I have not, like, the way that the, the information was relayed was that he was very excited to get my number <laughs> and then I, I never was. heard anything. And so I was like, I heard that you were really excited and yet you didn't call. So, so three weeks later, I get a text message that says, Hey, it's Sammy. Why haven't you called? Heard you've had my number. Yeah. Why haven't you called? Yeah. So that was, I made the first move. Okay. I think I can swear. Does Matt like to cook with you or just eat all the food you cook for him? <laughs> well, guys, spoiler alert. Matt does not like to cook. I think it was about a year ago, I cooked eggs and bacon. Yeah. And, I think we have a video of it. And I was, I was lost. I didn't know how to do it. You did a great job. You make sandwiches. You make a mean sandwich. Yes, I make a mean turkey and salami sandwich. Yeah. Double cheddar. Double cheddar. Treat yourself. What is one of your favorite things about the CrossFit community? Hmm, that's a good one. Well, I'm, I mean... We travel a ton. And the coolest thing about the CrossFit community is like whenever we're abroad, you can go into a CrossFit gym. And this was, I mean, this was even years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Before you were, obviously, it's a little bit different when I you mean, walk into a yeah, gym Yeah, before now. I but, started winning or like the name was recognizable. Like you, you get to go into a gym and you just know that you're around a group of people that are, are like-minded, that get what you do. And um, I'm sure we've all... For anybody who is in the CrossFit community, like we have friends that are outside the CrossFit community and there's just something a little different, right? Like they might not get what it is that you do and these workouts and, you know, like the openness coming and Friday night lights and, you know, you don't have to explain. When you go into a CrossFit gym, mm -hmm. you just know that people are like, come on in. So I think that's my favorite, especially because we travel a lot and get to go to a ton of different gyms. And that to me is really special. Mm -hmm. For someone who is new to cooking and is concerned about a healthy lifestyle choices, what piece of advice would you give them? Okay. So I would say start small. That's like, that, I mean, I think that that translates to any type of lifestyle change, but especially with cooking, like it can be overwhelming, right? There's a lot of steps. There's possibly ingredients that you've never used before. So um, actually Matt's mom, started with this she she was the best at it like I would be at the house and cooking all the time and you know so sweet she was like I'm really inspired by the fact that you just love it I want to love it the way that you do so she would say okay on Saturdays I'm going to pick out a recipe and then on Saturdays I'm going to cook that recipe so and it just was little, like little, a little thing little backstory growing up my mom did not cook my dad was the cook in the family my mom just that was not her priority she didn't do it. She didn't enjoy it. She wasn't good at it. So that wasn't where she put her effort. 
But then after watching Sammy, it became a Saturday thing. She would pick a recipe, go to the store, yeah. get all the ingredients, and then that was her project for the day. Yeah. And now we get pictures all the time. She cooks all the time. So I think that's like, that's always a great way of, you know, maybe it's you pick a cookbook. Maybe it's this cookbook, right? <laughs> and you just, you pick one recipe that you're like, okay, every Sunday I'm going to make something new. And, you know, don't do it, of course, on a day where you've got work from nine to five and you've got this meeting after work and an appointment. And then you're like, oh, I'm going I'm to cook this, you know, make it, <laughs> yeah. make it easy on yourself and kind of plan for it. Make it something that you look forward to and you you have all your ingredients, right? So when you start the the recipe, you're not like, oh, I forgot and now I have to go back out again. Make it a thing. And then slowly it just kind of becomes a little bit easier and you don't have to make it a big event every week. Have you always been into fitness and nutrition? What has that journey been like for you? Um, I would say fitness, yes. I've always been into fitness. I've always been active. I've always enjoyed, you know, sports. And when I was in college, I would do the like LA fitness, you know, boot camps or kickboxing mm -hmm. or whatever it was just to stay active. And I got into CrossFit because a friend of a friend was doing it. And I, I had a bunch of friends that were in the military and they had used, you know, I, I, I genuinely remember being in college and like doing Murph on our indoor track and had no idea what Murph was. Right. But I just had some friends in the military and they're like, do this workout with us. And it was running and some body weight stuff. So great. I, I was in, um, I started going to a local CrossFit gym and that's, that's kind of how the CrossFit side of things happened. Um, nutrition, I think within that, right, you start CrossFit and you learn about just part of their methodology. You learn about things that are, you know, paleo and, and what different diets, zone diets, all of these things. And so I just, I always enjoyed cooking. Um, and I just started experimenting with like, okay, what's this paleo thing? Or what's this, you know, what's mm -hmm. a keto diet or whatever. I didn't, I didn't really do them, but I researched <laughs> them, right? Like I just, I, I started, I had friends that were really strict paleo. So I would start making them stuff. And um, I just really enjoyed the fact that it was two interests that kind of came together. And it's kind of hard to have one without the other. Well, I, I remember too, um, early on in us day, like your Sunday yeah. Sunday evening or Sunday was your meal yeah. prep day. And that yeah. was just put a movie on in the background and just make your lunches for the week. Yeah. And it was partly out. I mean, for me, it was necessity. I wasn't necessarily <clears throat> meal prepping to fit macros or to, you know, zones or blocks or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever one you're abiding by. But it was mostly like I worked a ton. I worked a full time job at Reebok. I coached at two different gyms. Um, and so it was like I had to meal prep if I wanted to eat. I just didn't have a lot of time during the week to do any of it. So it was meal prepping for necessity. And yeah, I just loved the process. Like I was not trying to get it done quickly. I was chopping all my vegetables and, you know, cooking my meats and my rices and like whatever. Um, yeah, I just loved the whole, it was very relaxing and like therapeutic for mm -hmm. me. What is your go-to decision fatigue dinner? You're, you're burnt out from making decisions all day. What's your go-to dinner? That's a very real thing. That's yeah. an, it's currently the soy beef bowls. Yes. Yes. And a great one in here. Very, very similar to that recipe here. Let me find it. So the soy beef bowls, I mean, I know when you know you have a busy week and I'm basically never going to eat unless you're cooking for me. It's like you'll make 10 soy beef bowls put them in the fridge and then it's just a grab and go. But yep. the biggest thing is like, A, they're delicious, but then B, they keep yeah. very, very well. It used to be beef fried rice. Beef fried rice, yep. yeah. Yeah, I would, it was like. It I tasted, didn't... it tasted the same through the whole week. You never yeah. want that, that meal prep where by day three you're cracking it and you get a little whiff of something yeah. weird and you got, uh, all right, I'll roll the dice. Yeah. It's when it, when it holds and it keeps and it, and it tastes awesome. fine, the texture stays the same, whether it's cooked on the stove top or warmed up in the microwave. Yeah. That's another big thing. Right. Yeah. It's got to, it's got to keep, it doesn't just need to keep in terms of freshness. It needs to keep in terms of flavor. Like yeah. if it's going to get, yeah. Funky. Funky then. It's a no go. It's a no go. This one right here is um, Thai beef basil. Very similar. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a really good like, 
This one's a little different because it's got the vermicelli noodles instead of like rice, but you could always do it over rice yeah. instead of the noodles because maybe then I don't I don't know I don't think we've ever reheated those. You know they kind of stick together when you reheat them. A little bit. They're better a little bit better fresh. So swap out the rice noodles for rice. It's all the same. I'm trying to think of something else that we have for dinner when it's just like we're both just crushed from the day. If I have to make something, it'll typically be like the I made it the other day the steak with. Um, roasted garlic and shallots. Yes. It's just so easy. So easy. I love that you're like, it's so easy. So easy. Yeah. From all my experience. <laughs> it's so easy. Let me tell you. Um, very few ingredients. Taste great. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just, it is a, just a simple recipe. All of those recipes you can find on the blog, um, which is great. And then of course there are, it, it's funny. I'm like remembering the recipes yeah. in here. I just haven't seen them in so long. Um, so yeah, this book is chock full. Um, there's actually a pork fried rice in this mm, recipe. Yes. And that one was really good with like that glaze. Oh my gosh. All right, next question. Favorite place you have ever traveled? Oh my gosh. It's kind of hard to narrow it down. It is hard. We've been sent to some cool places. Very, very lucky to. Yeah, we have traveled a good bit. All right, what's your favorite? Um, we'll talk favorite destination and then favorite trip. Because people people and activities play a big role. In this. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so favorite destination that would either be Australia or Italy. Really? Yeah. Oh. Why? What were you, what were you thinking? Well, I was thinking favorite destination was the Maldives. Because that was just like, yeah, that was like a postcard. postcard. No matter postcard. what direction you look, whether you're on the beach, yeah, on the pier. Biking through the island. Okay, you, you've reminded me. Yeah. The Maldives. I think, I think yeah. favorite destination yeah. was the Maldives. Right, right. Okay, I see what you're saying now. Trip. But now now when you add in like the company you have mm -hmm. and the activities we've done, I think it comes for me, Australia when when we're on the Gold Coast. Yeah. Um, and then southern Italy. Yeah. We've been to southern Italy several times. You know what though? My favorite trip recently mm -hmm. definitely more recently but was the motorcycle trip oh yeah yeah we got to go on a really cool motorcycle trip um over the summer From it was actually spokane washington to sturgis. To, to sturgis for the sturgis bike week yeah we got we went through um glacier national park yellowstone like i i just loved getting to see that part of the country and then seeing it on the back of a motorcycle you you smell the air, you feel the temperature changes. We went to a really cool group. Like that was just, it was a very, I think it was because it was unassuming. I wasn't a hundred percent sold on the trip and it was over my birthday. And I was just kind of like, hmm, I don't know. And then we went and I was like, I'm so sorry that I ever thought that I wasn't going <laughs> to like, what a brat, right? I just was just like, oh my gosh, it was such an amazing, such an amazing experience. So yeah, that one, that one would be it. Thank you. For a newbie to gardening. Any tips or tricks? Oh my gosh, I'm also a newbie to gardening. Do you have any tips or tricks? <laughs> um, what I did this year, or excuse me, last year in my garden was I pretty much just, I planted, I put a ton of hay down, and then I just left it. Um, <laughs> I did, however, then, have a watering, like a, a, a soaker hose with a timer so that at sunrise every day it would water for like 10 or 15 minutes or something. Um, because we traveled so much, I just wanted, I wanted it to be as zero fuss as possible and just see what can the garden produce when I'm just not tending to I mean, it. those little cherry tomatoes. Yeah, we pretty much figured no, out. No, no effort. And so just much. the whole summer. And we just had a bowl of tomatoes in the middle of the island all year. And I was just, every time we walked by, I'd grab a handful. I don't even think don't we feel like guilty. cooked with them. I think that those were purely snacking tomatoes yeah. like there was just always and that was awesome and we only did one of those out of i think we had like seven tomato plants and there were a variety of different ones and we all agreed yeah seven of that cherry tomato plant next summer so yeah that my tip is like go into it with very low expectations and really enjoy the yields that you get um and that's what i did and it was great and now this year i feel more empowered and more like excited to give it more attention because I'm like, okay, I did nothing last year and I got some pretty great results. 
now let's see what we can get with a little bit more effort. So mm -hmm. that's what worked for me. What's something you do for fun outside of cooking or CrossFit? I like to be outside. So I like to go for walks or hikes or mountain biking. We just picked up skiing mm -hmm. for the season this year. So back into just like activity. Basically just like any activity outdoor person. activity yeah. she's in. That's I like a it. physical activity. Hiking, yeah. running, I mean, I like biking. sitting at the beach. Yeah. Who doesn't? I'll sit on my butt at the beach. I don't need to be doing <laughs> anything. But also if there's a walk on the beach, I'd enjoy a walk on the beach, mm -hmm. you know? Classic. I don't think it counts as cooking. Uh, it might. Like our Friday night burger nights. Like just hanging out with friends, but like giving everyone something to revolve around. Yeah. I mean, that is, it revolves around cooking. But Yeah. Oh, you're saying like activities. Yeah, like Friday yeah. night burger nights or like when we when we watch Yellowstone. Oh, yeah. We rallied. Like, yeah. And yeah. it's like you make it a thing like, all right, everyone's over for, for an hour and a half or two hours, whatever it is. And it's just having something to gather around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, People got dressed up. We asked people to like wear your best Yellowstone. <laughs> there was a lot of flannels, <laughs> some Carhartt, and I wore a dress. I yeah. was Beth. You know, come on. It's fun. What is your approach to diet? Whole 30, <laughs> paleo, keto, yeah. et cetera. Et cetera. Okay, yeah. I mean, there's like a million of them. Um, I guess it would depend on what your goals are. So if your goals are to lose weight, right? Like you're gonna have to find something that works best for you. If your goals are to be healthy, if your goals are to limit sugar, right? Like there's so many ways that you can go about it. I think what's worked really well for us, um, you know, you've actually, I, I haven't fluctuated much, right? My activity level has been mm. consistent. pretty consistent for the time that we've known each other. But for Matt, for instance, when he was competing, our approach was just like, as many calories as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, it was an AMRAP of calories. <laughs> um, but now that he's not training, it's like, okay, the, the food itself, the quality of the food doesn't change. Like all of the recipes in this book, these are, this is still, all of the stuff that we eat, you know? It's what we did eat. It's what we still eat, just different quantities. It's, yeah, there's the portions are different um, because, you know, Matt's activity level went from six to eight hours of training a day to two yeah hour Three. and a half two yeah. hours um and so that that's really the difference but the, I think the biggest thing for us is that um you know we've really tried to focus on balance and i think that that is probably the best thing um you know for whether it be like i said it depends on your goals but i i think the coolest thing is that if you can find some sort of balance you know whatever that means for you and, and focus on eating whole foods and, and enjoying yourself in the process, then it's going to be something that you're likely going to stick with a little bit longer. So like, I don't ever do the, you know, like healthy brownies or healthy cookies. It's kind of like, if we want brownies or cookies, if we're going to have a treat, we're going to have a treat, we're going to have a treat, but we're going to keep it as a treat, right? It's not a regular thing. We're not trying to make the healthier version so that we can do it every night. We want to, we want to preserve the fact that like, it's this an is a treat. It's a special occasion. Yeah. And I also think like for me specifically, you know, I was in a household with somebody who could just eat whatever they wanted. <laughs> and at times it was like confusing because I'm like, oh, I mean, you eat whatever you want and like you look great and you fitness great and like it works for you. So that I could I could do that, too. Right. And it's like, no, honey, you cannot. Um but what was awesome about that of like it being an occasion or a, a treat or things that, you know, we really tried to, to focus on, um, it helped, like, if I'm going to have a cookie, just give me the cookie with all the butter and all the sugar. And it's going to keep me from probably having three or four or five, right? Like if it's got all the good stuff in there, then I'm good at one. Um, and then, and then I can go back to like eating my whole foods and having my balanced dinners and stuff like that. So I think from a, diet perspective like we've always tried to just focus on things that are balance occasion and you know like if we're traveling life is meant to be lived and we've struggled with that before like we're on the road for so long that you know you get in this habit of when you're traveling you get appetizers and dinner and dessert and then you're like well we're on the road for three weeks at a time like this is not a, a maintainable lifestyle so um i think it's constantly checking in with yourself and finding like where is that balance for you um so that's my very long-winded way of 
approaching diet. All right, last question. What is your favorite date night meal to make? This one's tough. Well, we got some fennel ribs in the oven right now. Yeah. Here, let me just quick flip to that page. These fennel ribs gotta, are incredible. I wish you guys could smell the house right now. And it's also one of those things that I remember I remember the first time she made them. They're made in the oven, which was oh crazy to me. I thought that was like a no-no. Right, because they're so used to barbecue smoked ribs. My mouth is watering right now. That's a good sign, guys. <laughs> That's a good sign. All right. So fennel ribs, that's that's your go-to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, date night tonight. Yeah. We're sharing it with some lovely people. <laughs> All right. Do you want to jump into the 22 questions in two minutes? Yeah, let's see what we can do here. 22 in two. I'm going to, 22 in two. I'm going to be the bottleneck here. We're trying to read these off quickly enough. Oh, my God. All right, 22 questions in two minutes. Let's see if we can achieve it. All right, three, two, one, go. Where were you born? Fall River, Massachusetts. Oh, my gosh, I was almost wrong on the first question. <laughs> Who would you want to play you in a movie? I don't even know. I, two minutes. No. <laughs> I don't even know actresses' names. Like, the last yeah. movie I watched was something with Cameron Diaz. So it's like Cameron Diaz, but that makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me. She's six two blonde. <laughs> nope. All right, we'll um, skip that one. All right, we'll come back to it. We're not going to skip it. We'll come back to it. What was your first job? First job, I was a wedding DJ. What chore do you hate doing? Mm, cleaning the toilet. That's low hanging fruit. What, what's, what's another one? Are you kidding me? I do that twice a week. The job you hate is folding laundry. Or putting laundry putting away. Putting laundry away. You I don't mind folding, folding it. it. All right. I just don't want to, oh, I don't know. It's got to go in like a million different places when it's in this neat little stack. I just don't get it. What's your biggest fear? <laughs> I almost said snakes, but that's not, it's just a joke. Um, biggest fear? Getting kidnapped? Really? Yeah, that's kind of scary. That was not what I was expecting. Why? What were you expecting? Oh, these are your questions. Well, who, no, who I makes you who makes you laugh the most? You. Uh, what is the one thing you need to have in your fridge at all times? Hmm. <clears throat> eggs. You can do anything with eggs. What was your favorite school subject? Mm -hmm. Writing. Who is the most interesting person you met recently? Hmm. Really? We meet a lot of people. We literally have Ryan Lochte sitting on the couch right oh, now. Oh, yes. See, this is what I mean, though. We meet a lot of people. <laughs> Ryan Lochte is here for dinner. What is He's your, an amazing swimmer. What is your middle name? Hope. What is your biggest pet peeve? Hmm. Biggest pet peeve. Clicking pens. Yeah, it just, I think it's just like you're in conversation and somebody's like nervously clicking a pen. Ah, and you're just yeah. kind of like, hey, can you, can you, can you stop? What is your favorite hobby? Cooking. What is your guilty pleasure? Guilty pleasure. Dancing. You feel guilty about dancing? No, I just like don't do it all the time. You know, like when am I going to do it? So it's like I do it and I'm like, woohoo! Okay. Yeah, but do you feel guilty about it? No, like my, I, don't. my, I guess you're right. My right. guilty pleasure is like rolling quarters. Rolling <laughs> like rolling change, stationary. Oh my god. Like gosh, if okay. I go Sorry, if I go think about this. like I can walk through staples all day. Yeah. It's my oh, love it. Getting all organized. I mean grocery shopping. Like at a good grocery store. Okay. Like if I'm at Trader Joe's, don't rush me. I want to just, I, I could tell you every product on the shelf and I still want to linger. Mm -hmm. I still want to like up and down and, oh, look at that. They've got new flour. Oh, they've got, you know, like new condiments. I don't need them, but I love, I love a good grocery store. Mm -hmm. Do you have any hidden talents? Uh, I don't know. Do I? Yeah. She can rip on a dirt bike. <laughs> oh, you're kind. You're very kind. What color is your toothbrush? White and pink. What is your pet's name? 
We don't have a pet. What is your favorite word? People have favorite words? I don't know, apparently. What's your favorite? Sunflower. I just looked at the sunflowers. I love, <laughs> I mean, I have sunflower tattoos. I love sunflower. What is the last album you bought or streamed? Ooh, album. I'm currently streaming the Outer Banks playlist on Spotify. It's amazing. <laughs> Uh, what is the last gift you gave? Last gift I gave. I sent my friend who lives in Hawaii a flask of maple syrup. Great gift. That was a great gift. Yeah. She's from Vermont. It was, I nailed it. What cause is dear to your heart? The USO. What is your greatest achievement? Guys, you're looking at it. This book. Thank you so much. The link right here. Oh, I keep going the wrong way. <laughs> the link right here. Where do you want to go that you haven't been? Last question. Ooh. Where do I want to go? We've been to a lot of places. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah. I want to go back. Can I say that? Sure. It's your it's question. It's my question. Yeah. 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 I want to go back to Montana. Oh, yeah. Because we were there like passing through and I was pumped about it but yeah. I, I, it's been a place that I, I would love to visit Montana so I want to go back to Montana awesome yeah. well that's all the questions oh and gosh. perfect timing signing the last book thank you guys again so much for oh look at all these goodies <laughs> thank you guys so much for joining this was such a such a cool project to work on I'm super grateful you know as we were talking like all the learnings and all the exciting, like I am, somebody asked me today, like, would you, would you do another one? And I'm like, well, yeah. I, I, mean, I can't wait for the next one. I feel like, I remember one of the things that I was saying to Matt along the way, like, I feel like I've already in a, in a way outgrown this. Like it taught me so much that now I'm like, oh, I, I could have totally made this this recipe better or made these photos better or there's there's so many things i feel like with with a work like this like you can always do something better Le lessons learned that you're going to apply to the yeah. next one yeah and so it's like i'm so pumped that this is out and i'm excited that now i have all of these these learnings and all of the things that you know like i, I can apply to another project mm -hmm. like this so yeah it's been super fun so so pumped that this is finally out it's in your kitchens i can't wait to see everything that you guys make at home for your friends and family and the dinner parties that you host so feel free to tag me i do my best to reply to everyone you know even if it's just a quick little day <laughs> <laughs> well thank you guys so much i hope you have a great rest of your night i appreciate you spending it with us and um yeah thank you we'll see you next time yeah Hey, this is John Acuff, New York Times best-selling author of seven books and someone who's done a live signing. If you like the one you just watched, make sure you check out our YouTube channel. It's full of amazing authors having great conversations and signing books for viewers just like you. So make sure you subscribe and thanks for watching today.